So welcome everyone. I'm uh, Lucio Bordonaro, customer service specialist and trainer here at uh, Webratio. Today in this webinar, I'm going to introduce you to the new features of Webratio Mobile Platform 8.3. This is the webinar agenda and the topics that uh, we will uh, we will go through, starting from the uh, map integration then we'll see custom uh, components localization continuous build web ratio dons and at the end of the webinar we will have five or ten minutes for question and and answer um, i kindly suggest you if you have questions during the webinar to submit your question into the go to meeting chat so that i can answer your question at the end of the webinar okay before starting with the map integration i just want to show you that i've prepared a mobile project which is called movie theater okay um, this mobile project describes and shows you the nearest movie theaters okay and is composed of two screens okay one with the list of movie theaters and another one which uh, lets you reserve tickets for for the show i'm going to use this project to introduce you to the new features of web ratio mobile platform 8.3 as the agenda said we will start from map integration map integration is available both for android and ios mobile operating systems okay uh, map integration is done uh, through a utility component, which is the map component, okay? And this component is able to work in two different modes, okay? It may work in show map mode, in terms of showing a map, so a location uh, of, uh, of a place, and in uh, when working in show map mode, it leverages the Google Maps API, or otherwise it's, it's able to work in setup root mode, okay? Anyway, when working in show map mode, since it needs to use the Google Maps API, it requires the configuration of a Google API project. Uh, we have already created an online resource lesson that explains how to integrate the maps into your mobile application. And it's already available on learn.webratio.com, okay? Uh, in this lesson, I also explain how to uh, create the Google Map API and the API keys that we will use later in the mobile application. Just to show you an example of how the map integration is done in terms of showing the map or setting up a route, you can see that on the left, the map of this, uh, this office is shown directly inside the screen. So it will be a utility component to use as a view component, okay? So the main content is shown inside the screen. Otherwise, when you set up a route, uh, the execution, the runtime execution goes out from the mobile application and calls the device uh, map application, okay? Now, let's start modeling the map integration. So I go back to, to the project, to the movie theater project, and I start adding a new screen that shows the location of a filter on a map, okay? So I just renamed the screen into uh, filter location and I place inside this screen a utility component which is the map utility component, okay? I remember when working in uh, uh, show mode, it uh, behaves like a view component. So this will be the teaser location map component, okay? Let's add a flow starting from the list, which is connected to the 
selection events called map. And let's uh, set up all the required parameters for this view component. So let's put the location into the addresses parameter, uh, the title that we want to show on the marker of the map, which is the name of the theater, and the snippets, which can be uh, secondary information like, once again, the location. Okay. In order to use the map integration, as you can see from the properties view, I also need to set up the map providers, okay? So clicking this button, I can create a new map provider inside the service data provider node of the mobile uh, project, okay? Let's first of all create the one for Android, so map provider for Android. I choose the platform, which is, of course, Android, and then I have to generate an API key from the Google API console. Uh, I've already uh, done that, so I will just copy and paste my Google API key for Android into my mobile project, and then I create another one just in case I want to use the map provider also for iOS. So map provider for iOS. I choose the platform, which is iOS, and also here I copy and paste these API key, okay? They can be both generated uh, from the Google API, uh, Google project API console. Once that I have uh, set up my maps provider, I can link both of them in order that my app will run with the maps on Android and also on iOS. Then I save and I generate the project. And I'm going to use, uh, like I did in the past webinar, Mobizem, in order to scan the QR code from the app dashboard and run the app directly using the web ratio mobile developer. So the generation is completing at 78%. Now let's wait a little bit. As soon as the app is generated, I'm going to scan the QR code using the Webration Mobile Developer app. Okay. So I prepare to scan the QR code taking a little bit of time, the generation. Okay, it should appear in a few seconds. Okay, now I scan the QR code. It is connecting to the workstation. And in a few seconds, we will see the mobile app and running. It's still setting up, I think, the uh, server, okay. It's taking a little bit longer to uh, start. Maybe I need to scan once again the QR code. Okay. And here is the mobile application running showing the list of theaters. Okay, it's still loading. I'm, I apologize for that, it's a little bit slow today. Okay. Perfect, now it's loading finally the mobile application. You see the list of theaters with the possibility of reserving of, or showing the map. So tapping the map button, we will see the new screen, which is the theater location screen with the map and the theater located onto the map. It seems that there are uh, connection issues loading the map. So let me just open the map again. 
Okay, here you see the map with the marker and tapping on the marker you see the details with the name of the theater and its location. Okay, so I just apologize for uh, for the times, but it's, it's it was a little bit slower than than usual. Now let me just model the other uh, mode that you can use for the map uh, component, which is the setup route. So I add a new screen, which is the get direction screen with a form component that I also call on get directions. I add inside this form component two fields. One is the source address and the other one is the destination address. Okay. The second one is preloaded and not modifiable since it will be the address of the movie theater. Okay. There will be a navigation flow starting from the list that will bring to the destination address the location property of the movie theater. Then I will need an action definition here since I need to, to use the map uh, component in the uh, setup root mode. Okay, so I need to use it to get the directions. So I add this operation here and I uh, connect everything with success and error flows. Okay, I create all the required uh, input port parameters, which are the destination address and the source address, and they just type an error message here in case something goes wrong. Okay, once I have the uh, the action definition, let me rename it into uh, get directions. Okay, once I have the action definitions, I can connect it to the form using a navigation flow that we can. Uh, link to the start event and then you can just connect with the with a success flow to the home screen of the mobile application. On this navigation flow uh, I'm going to bind the destination address and the source address. Okay, then I generate once again the mobile application. Now it should be faster than previously and as soon as it loads I'm going to open once again from the uh, from the Webration Mobile Developer app. Okay, so let me uh, restart it once again. I just close all the running instance of Webration Mobile Developer app, and I scan once again the QR code. Okay. so that it will load once again the application, showing also the direction uh, button. Okay, the app is loading, so it will take some, some seconds. In the meanwhile, uh, Let's wait, okay, so it's loading now. Okay, now here is showing the map button, but also the directions button. If I click here, I see a new screen, okay, in which I'm uh, required to insert the source address of my route, okay? So let me type, for example, Como Italy, okay? Then when I press the start button, it will ask uh, which kind of app I want to use to get the directions. I use the Google Maps, so I just tap, tap here. It shows the direction list and in a few seconds also the map with the directions. Okay, if I want to go back to the mobile application, the web ratio generated one, I have to tap three times on the back button since it opens three labels of navigation. Okay, now let's go to the 
Next uh, topic of the webinar, which are the custom components. Uh, this new feature enables you to develop new uh, components to extend the set of view components and operation which are provided by default by Webratio Mobile Platform. This applies both to mobile projects and data service projects, okay? But the most interesting uh, components that you can create are the custom mobile components, since they may rely on a native plugin or they can be standalone to achieve general tasks, okay? When they rely on a native plugin, uh, it means they, that they integrate native functions of the device. And if you want to experience the development of custom components, you can refer to this website, which I put the, the icon here, which is plugreg.com, which is a container of plugin which, are, uh, which can be used together with Apache Cordova. Uh, we have already created also for the custom components an online resource that explains how to develop Okay, and it's available on learn.webratio.com, okay? Now, uh, during this webinar, I'm going to develop uh, a custom mobile components with the native integration to send SMS. Since I want to realize the, and I want to give a, an SMS confirm to user after they reserve tickets, okay? So I'm going to create a new mobile component project that, for example, uh, I can call like my components, okay? And next step, I'm going to create a new component, okay? That I put inside my components project. This will be the SMS component. It will be an operation, okay, since it needs just to execute the device logic for sending the SMS. And when I press on finish, I will see three files opened in WebRatio. The first one is the, the starting point to develop a custom component, which is the component XML file, okay, which takes the same name of the component. The first thing that I can do from here is, for example, set up an icon for, for the, uh, the component, okay? I have to provide a 16, uh, for a 16 icon and a 32 icon, okay? Moreover, I need to, to say that my components will be source of success flow and error flow, since it's an operation, so, the runtime execution may be successful or it can be, it can be, uh, it can throw an error, okay? Moreover, this component is going to execute uh, native uh, functions like sending SMS, so I need to add a native plugin, which I've already downloaded from plugrack.com. This is a GitHub project, okay? which is the Cordova SMS plugin master, okay? You see here the description of the plugin. Now I'm, I, I can save the component XML file. And uh, the next step will be to define the input parameters for the component, okay? At least I will require the um, phone number from to which I want to send the SMS, and of course the text message that I want to send. I've already prepared all the required input parameter in this text file, so I'm just going to paste it here, okay? I have three input parameters, phone number, message text, and replace line break that we will see later, okay? And then the next step is to define the runtime logic inside the JavaScript service file. Okay, also for this, I've already prepared the lines of code, so I just copy and paste to, to the JavaScript file. Okay, now I save everything, and 
I go back to the project, to the movie theater project. What I want to do is that I want to add here an action definition, okay, a new one, that it's used to reserve the tickets, okay? So what I suppose to, to model here is that something happens, okay? So I put an operation here just to say that there is a logic that is going to be executed, okay? Whatever kind of logic, okay? And then after this logic is executed, I need to send an SMS confirmation of the reservation. But I'm not able to find my custom component inside WebRatio's toolbar, okay? The reason is that for mobile uh, projects, I'm forced to define a dependency, okay? So I need to say that I want to use the my component project, okay? I link the project, WebRatio asks to save and reload the project, so you will see the project closing and reopening automatically. And if I go back to my action definition, I will be able to pick the SMS component directly from the toolbar, okay? So I put this component here, I link with Sockets flow and with an error tool, okay? Once again, I add a notification message here in case of error, okay? And then I prepare a data flow to pass all the required information to the SMS operation. I prepare all the input parameters, okay? In this case, I just need the text and the phone number, which are the mandatory parameters. I save everything and then I go back to the, to the app view in order to connect everything with the required flows. So I create, first of all, the hook events with the required navigation flow and the success flow that leads back to the home screen. Then I need to set up all the bindings from here. So the phone number, it's a needed information that is uh, stored into the uh, form reserve ticket. And that text message, maybe we can send the name of the movie for which I, I reserved the tickets. Now, this is a, a native integration for which the emulator uh, still hasn't support. So what I need to do here is to build my mobile project, okay? So I create a new mobile uh, project build configuration. Since I need to install the uh, mobile application right into the device in order to use the SMS integration. Unfortunately, this feature is not yet available on WebRatio Mobile Developer App, but it will be, it will be uh, available very soon. While the uh, cloud build process is executing, just let me say you uh, more, uh, just let me give you more details about the JavaScript service that we created. Uh, this service is made of two, uh, two main functions. One is the initialize, okay? And the other one is the execute. We are only using the execute since we are only managing the runtime execution of the component, okay? Uh, the, f the first lines of code are used to define the uh, variables that I need in the runtime execution of the component. And here, the variables that are defined are phone number, message text, and replace line breaks option, which are exactly the parameters, the input parameters that I've defined inside the input.template file, okay? And uh, as you see previously, I only used the phone number and message text properties since they are the only mandatory properties of my, of my component. Then once that I have the properties defined, uh, there is uh, the check on the replace line break uh, variable, which is not used, so this is not interesting for us. And later there is the call to the phone gap plugin usage, okay? directly using this sms.send uh, function, okay? 
that get as input the phone number and message text parameters, okay, and sends the SMS. If uh, an error is thrown, we will return with the output error, okay? Otherwise, if everything goes as expected, we will see and we will redirect the user to the successful. Okay, in the meanwhile, it is building the uh, mobile application, the Android application online, it's still at the 50%. So let me just introduce the next topic. Let me just go a little bit straightforward. Uh, the next topic is the localization. So with Vibration Mobile Platform 8.3, you are able to localize your mobile apps using the choice of the device language made by the user, okay? This will provide the translation for all the labels and patterns of your mobile application, okay? Uh, I will show you the uh, localization using the reserved ticket screen, okay? So just opening the localized dialog, you will see that I defined an, uh, an additional language, which is the Italian, okay? The English is the default one, you will, will see that. I defined the Italian, so I'm going to provide a translation for all the labels of the reserved ticket screen, okay? so. I add the translation for Italian, okay? Uh, using this key message dialog. And I'm going to show you how to localize and how the localization work directly from the web emulator, okay? Okay, if I just press on OK and I generate the project, I will be able to, uh, to see from the dashboard, okay, we'll be able to see from the dashboard, well, first of all, this is the QR code for the installation of the API, but it disappeared, so let me just scan once again the QR code, okay? Uh, in the meanwhile, from the web emulator, I'm going to show you the localization for the reserved ticket screen, okay? So it's taking a little bit to load. Let me just restart the emulator. Okay, it's loading the mobile app. Okay, if I tap on reserve, you see this is the reserve screen, okay, in English. If you switch the language from the web emulator, you will see that in Italian, it gets the Italian labels, okay. On the device, you can do the same uh, the same test, changing the device language, okay? Good. So let me just start once again the uh, build process so that at the end I will show you the uh, confirm using the SMS message. In the meanwhile, let's go on with the continuous build topic, okay? So with Vibration Mobile Platform 8.3, you will be able to configure and prepare custom and files and then tasks to generate or build your mobile projects using um, normal continuous integration tools and environments like Jenkins and doing everything outside the Vibration Mobile platform, okay? For continuous builds, we already created an online resource, which is an article, okay, that I'm going to show you here. This article is a step-by-step -step tutorial that shows you how to run uh, ant tasks for generate or building your mobile applications, okay? During this webinar, I'm going to show you how to integrate with Jenkins, okay? So I'm going to build this other project that I prepared 
previously, which is the Hello World project, which is a very simple mobile application. Okay. Before building this project, I need to create a build configuration. Okay. So just I just need to create it. I don't need to execute it. Okay. So this is the Hello World build configuration, which is available for the Hello World project. Now I'm going to start my local installation of Jenkins. Okay. And what I want to uh, what I want to show you is how to run an AMP task for for building a mobile application outside web ratio. Okay. So my uh, local installation of Jenkins is on local host 8080 slash Jenkins. Okay. I've already prepared this continuous integration build project with some uh, parameters. Okay. So this uh, project is based on the build XML file, which is described in that article. Okay. This build XML file requires a set of parameters and a set of variables. Okay. That I do not put here in a, in explicit way. Okay. I just define some uh, parameters. Okay. Which are uh, project parameters like the project name, the configuration, the password, and the workspace. And then I also created some parameters at Jenkins level. Okay. These are system parameters that describes and refers to the web ratio installation directory to the username and serial that I'm using to create this build and to the output directly. So the place where I want the build to be stored. Okay. If I go back to the main dashboard of Jenkins, I'm able to run this build. Okay. For the Hello World project using the Hello World Android configuration that I've created previously. I need to uh, set the password, okay, for my WebRatio account, and uh, I need to specify the workspace that I'm using. Once I click the Build button, it will start the build process, okay, and from here, I can, I'm able to take a look at the console output, okay? So here it's logging all the information for the build process, okay? So you will see all the uh, parameters that I defined on Jenkins, so my installation directory, the project directory, the configuration that I'm using, and then all the logs that is doing while generating the project. Uh, even if the build is executed outside web ratio mobile platform, it's still executed on our cloud server. Okay, so it will take a few a few minutes. When we wait for this build done with Jenkins, I show you since the build process ended successfully for our movie theater project, I'm going to show you the SMS integration installing the app on my device. Okay, so I've scanned the QR code generated by WebRish Mobile Platform for the Movie Theater project. Now it's downloading the APK file from WebRish's cloud server. As soon as the download is completed, you will see the details of the mobile app, and then you are going to install it. Okay, it will take, I think, a few seconds. At the end of this process, we will be able to run directly the mobile application. Okay. It's now loading the main screen. I'm going to reserve tickets to, to this uh, movie theater. Okay. And I'm going to reserve, for example, or let me say two tickets. Okay. When I press the book button, you will see this loading message. It goes back to the home screen and in a few seconds we will receive an SMS. Okay. With a confirmation. So I'm going to see Jurassic World at this 
filter, okay? Now let's go back to the Jenkins build. It took two minutes and five seconds, so the build is now ready, okay? This is the location of the location, the local uh, directory for the build. So I can just copy this path and paste it here. And you will see that into this output folder, I have the hello world dot apk file, okay, which is the build of my mobile app. Okay. Now, just to finish the topics of the webinar, let's take a look at the web ratio add-ons. We introduced new uh, components, new styles, and new mobile projects to show you the latest features included in WebRatio mobile platform. WebRatio add-ons is available directly from the WebRatio uh, Web platform, WebRatio mobile platform, using the add-ons button. And we have created a set of projects, a set of sample projects that will show you how to use the newest integration that we introduced in WebRatio. So you have the contact sample projects, the map sample projects, the barcode sample, and you also have some new mobile components. One is the send SMS, send SMS sorry, uh, mobile components, and the other one is the geolocation mobile project. Uh, mobile components, sorry. Okay, so from my point of view, it's everything that I wanted to tell, to tell you. Uh, now we will have five or 10 minutes for question and answer. Before that, uh, I just uh, give you this advice. In the, in the next days, you will receive an email with uh, a link to our evaluation survey for the webinars. I kindly suggest you to fill out the survey since it's very important for us to collect feedback, feedback from you about our webinars on WebRation Mobile Platform.